the second question is there. Your second question. A little louder, my son. A little louder. The second question is there. Why are we, we, we hear that and the Bible tell us that God created a man. And so all the, we have a different, different nation here, population here. So now why did God allow, allow blacks to, 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 to be suffer? Yes. I will explain that. I will explain that. You see, go, it's, the creation is a creation of God. But mankind, he creates his own standards of judging. Like for example, we are told by certain groups of churches that the black people of the earth are the children of Ham. You see, Noah, Noah, you heard the name Noah, after the flood, in the Genesis chapter 9 you read, Noah, after the flood, him and his three sons, Sam, Ham and Japheth, they started growing grapes and from the fruit of the vine they fermented the wine and Noah drank too much and he was lying naked. I'm reading this from the book of Genesis chapter 9 and out of his three sons Sam, Ham and Japheth, Ham, Ham saw his father's nakedness you know sprawled out on the ground naked and it was a big joke for him so he laughed. Who laughed? Ham. You know how you spell ham? H-A-M, ham. Ham. H-A-M, ham, you also spell for that piece of pig. See? You know the Englishman, he loves ham and eggs. Ham and eggs. How do you spell ham? <laughs> That's right. So this person's name was Ham, one of the sons of Noah. His name was Ham. And he saw his father's nakedness and he laughed. Big joke. The other two sons, they felt remorse, ashamed of the father's condition. So they took a piece of cloth and they walked backwards and they covered up the father. The father in the meantime he knew what was going on but he was too dead drunk to do anything about it. But when he came into to his senses he began to curse. And you remember the curse? He said, curse be Canaan for a servant of servant thou shalt be unto thy brother. You attend Bible class, don't you? You remember this? Curse be Canaan, for a servant of servant thou shalt be unto thy brother. So they tell us in a system, they say that we black peoples of the earth are the children of Ham. That fellow who behaved like a pig, laughed at his father's nakedness. So as such, we are to become the hewers of wood and the drawers of water. So they want to see to it that you, you keep to your role. Your role is sweep the streets, carry the rubbish bin, work in the factories, whatever. This is your menial labor, that is your destiny. Now, this is the invention of man. See, man's own invention. God didn't make you so. He, as we are told, that he made us in his image. He made everybody upright. He says, he the Lord had made man upright. Upright means straight, going straight. So. The invention of man, the devilishness in man, is finding excuses to how I can discriminate against you, create theories, weave stories, fairy tales, and around these fairy tales, I find justification for keeping you down. Now, the Holy Quran, this book of God, the Quran, our religious book, it gives us an explanation of the theory of race. And I would like you to judge whether it answers the problems of mankind or not. It says, and I'm quoting in Arabic, the original, and I give you the translation. It says, Ya Yohannas, say, O mankind, the whole of mankind, whether Africans, Indian, Chinese, Eskimo, everybody. Ya Yohannas, O mankind, inna khalaknakum min dhakarim wa unsa. It is we, God Almighty says, we who have created the male and the female. We have created you all of a single pair, a male and a female. And it is we who have made you into nations and tribes. What for? To discriminate against one another? No. It's the Lita'arafu, that you may recognize one another. This Mr. John is a Zulu. That Mr. John is a Kaza. That Mr. John is a Swazi. That Mr. John is an Englishman. That Mr. John is a Frenchman. That Mr. John is a German. For the purpose of recognition, he has made you into nations and tribes. 
But since man has a sickness of wanting to discriminate on false premises, so God Almighty gives us the standard. We all have a tendency to behave like that. All. There is no exception. There is no nation on earth who is an exception to this rule that everybody wants to create standards of judging other people as inferior to themselves. You said the African just now, and I accept that the African is in the South African context, he is at the lowest rung of the ladder. Economically, educationally, in the professions, he is at the bottom rung. That's we have to agree. But now among the Africans, we have Zulus. I was questioning the students, I said, are you all Zulus? The majority way. Some said no, she is a Khaza. Somebody said something, Chwana. But now the majority of the people that are here in this institute are Zulus. Am I right? Yes. Right. Now ask the Zulu. Ask the Zulu, what is Zulu? Is Zulu. What does it mean? Is Zulu. The heavens, no? Izulu. You are the heavenly people. Izulu. Hmm? Yes, that's in your mind. Izulu, we are the topmost people. Among the Africans, who is the greatest tribe, the warrior nation, the topmost nation? Your title, the name, your name of your, your race is also Izulu. 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 And what about the others? What do the Zulu say? Isilwane. Am I right? What does he say about the others? The Khaza, the Swazi, the Chwana. What are they? Isilwane. No, this is the nature of man. Everybody. The Arab said, he said, I'm the Arab, means we are the eloquent people, and the rest of the world is ajam, meaning dumb. The Jew said, we are the children of God, and the rest of them are Gentiles. You know, Jews and Gentiles. What is Gentile? It means unclean, filthy, dirty people. All the rest of the world, uncircumcised. Filthy, dirty people. This is the nature of man. Every human being on earth, whether he's an Indian, whether he's a European, whether he's an Englishman, he feels better than the German. The German feels he's better than the French, and the French feels he's better than the Italian. So this is the nature of man. So God Almighty, God Almighty, he gives us a standard. See, since man has the sickness of creating false standards for himself, this creator, God himself, he gives us a standard of judging between people. And the judgment is, it says, inna akramakum indallahi atkakum. So most certainly, the noblest in the sight of God is he who is the best in conduct. Not good or bad, not rich or poor, not black or white, but the best in conduct. If your behavior is better for mankind than mine, you are a better person. If my behavior is better than yours for mankind, then I'm a better person. It has got nothing to do with your race, your language, your color, or your riches. This is the standard as given by God Almighty in the Holy Quran, standard of judging between one and another. Your behavior, your conduct, your good behavior. Any other question?